Alrighty folks, this is Jason with the Primal Outdoors channel. Today we're going to be doing a bit of an installation video on this out-equipped Glacier Probe 12-volt air conditioner. Now, at full disclosure, they did send me this air conditioner to do this video. I don't have the application yet that I want to put this in. I'm not actually going to put this into Sasquatch, my 4x4 van, mainly just because the, the roof area is just a little bit too big. It would be nice to have some air conditioning in, the, in Sasquatch during the summer. But for the things that I do with that van, I just feel like this is uh, too big. But what I do want is down the line, I'm planning on purchasing a small utility uh, cargo trailer that I'm gonna convert into a remote office. So after I return from an adventure with Sasquatch, I can spend a few days out uh, editing and have access to a full monitor and better tools for doing editing and a better comfort, more comfortable desk and chair. But I also wanted to have air conditioning so that that way when I'm out in the summer, I can stay cool and nice. And that's why I wanted this unit. But what we're gonna do today, since I don't have it, and this is an installation video, I've created a mock-up roof here so that we can go through each part of the installation and I can show you in detail every step. Before we get started with the installation, let's cover a little bit of information about the Outquip Glacier Pro. This system uses an inverter compressor, which means it adjusts speed to match your setup temp, so cooling and heating stay steady without draining your battery. An electronic expansion valve controls refrigerant flow based on real-time temp and pressure. That gives you faster, more precise performance with battery efficiency. The whole setup runs on a smart controller that keeps all the components in sync so everything works together without wasting power. Brushless DC fans on both ends give you strong airflow, stays quiet, and lasts longer. Same with the twin rotary compressor, it's quick, smooth, and efficient. On the 12 volt model like this one, this system pulls anywhere from 22 to 62 amps depending on conditions. That's roughly 250 to 700 watts. Standby draw is only about one watt. The condenser uses multi-layer copper tubing, two layers in the 12 volt model, which improves heat transfer and helps everything run more efficiently. The larger outdoor unit allows for an oversized evaporator, which boosts overall performance by around 10%. And the sealed air box with separate airflow paths cuts noise and smooths out airflow makes it a lot more pleasant in a small space like an RV or van so what I've done here is I've created this mock-up roof so I've got basically a piece of 16 gauge steel we've got some foam insulation and then I've got a quarter inch piece of plywood that would be similar to most like RV style builds where your interior is going to be some kind of very thin uh, ply board now what I've done here is I've created a 14 by 14 inch hole. And that is one of the ways that you can install this air conditioner is you can use an existing 14 by 14 inch hole if you're putting the air conditioner where an old fan used to be. But another way you can install it is they have an option where you create a 14 by 18 inch hole. But I figure since most of you are going to be doing this, you're probably going to be retrofitting an older setup so I decided that what we're gonna to show today is doing it with the 14 by 14 inch hole. So in the installation kit, you're gonna get this template here that is gonna help you drill some holes. You have the 14 by 14 inch opening, but you do have some holes here that need to be drilled. Uh, two of the, or four of the holes are for the brackets that are actually gonna hold the air conditioner in place. And two of the holes are for the interior trim piece. But what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get this cut out and then we're gonna lay it out and then we'll drill our holes through our mock-up rough. All right, so now that we've drilled our holes and for your information, uh, these are the M6s, the inner holes are the M6s, the outer holes are the M8s. Uh, for the M6s, I used a quarter inch drill bit for the uh, M8s I used a 516 inch drill bit. Now we're going to start thinking about putting on this seal that they provided for us. Before we do that, you're going to want to make sure that you clean the surface very well, especially if you're putting this in the place of an old fan. Make sure you clean off all the old sealant, get back down to the bare roof and then use something like rubbing alcohol, which is what I used here, to make sure that you have a good surface for this sticky back tape to connect to. Now this is one area of the manual I feel like they're a little bit shy on information, 
Uh, they don't necessarily, they just kind of show that you need to put it down, but they don't really specify how it should go. And I'm gonna assume that it would make most sense that they do want us to have the foam outside of these holes. Uh, so as we lay it out that we want to end up with the foam being just outside of these holes to make sure that you don't get leaks or water coming in through any of these holes. Now, um, I would probably put some kind of sealant uh, inside these holes along with the screws just to make sure that they are extra sealed. I'm not going to do that on this, obviously, because this is a mock-up. But if I was doing this on a regular roof, when I went to put the uh, bolts in, I would probably put a dab of sealant around this so as the bolts went in that hopefully it would seal up around the bolt and if any water did migrate past this that it hopefully wouldn't end up in here but in the end i guess if it does migrate past this it's gonna end up in here so hopefully the seal works well but basically what you got to do uh, from what it sounds like is we need to cut this to our sizes that we want and then put it all the way around and just make sure that we don't end up with any gaps and try to keep everything as tight as possible. Okay, so I've got this seal roughly laid out the way I want. I'm not gonna pull the sticky back that is on this off for this mock-up installation because obviously I wanna be able to keep this seal available to me so I can use it in my final installation when I do get a trailer. So right now I've just got it duct taped down and just roughly hold it in place for the rest of uh, this demonstration. Now, one thing they talk about on these seals is there's these holes, and in these holes are little spacers. They say in the manual that you should be putting those in, but it looks like to me they're already in there, and there's nothing in the hardware kit, but I can see that there is spacers in all of the holes already. So if you get to that part of the manual and you're wondering where the spacers are, there's a good chance they're probably already in the seal. Um, like here, you can see one and it's out, but they're already in the seal. So just go ahead and leave them in there. And then lastly, before we start thinking about putting the air conditioner unit onto our mock-up roof, is they also recommend that you use a UV resistant sealant along the edge. So after you stick this down, then go around the entire outer edge with a UV resistant sealant. They don't give any recommendations there and they don't provide any sealant in the box which i would like to see that i'd either like to have a recommendation of what sealant we should be using or i would like that they gave enough in the box that we should be able to do this project but again since this is a mock-up i'm not going to do that part anyways but i will uh, see if i can contact the company before this goes out and see if they have any recommendations on what sealant they would recommend for that spot all right, so at this stage, I've gone around and put all of the studs in their appropriate holes, and the holes are marked. So the ones marked seven is where the six millimeter studs go, and the holes marked eight are where the eight millimeter studs. Now each stud is got a really long thread and a really short thread. The really short thread goes into the uh, AC, and then the long thread is for when you actually put the bracket on. It'll give you plenty of room, depending on the thickness of your ceiling, to make sure you can get this tight. Now I was able to put all these studs in by hand, so you don't need any special tools for that at this point. Now looking at this, I do foresee a problem, especially since I'm gonna try to attempt to put this on by myself, but I'm betting two or maybe even three people would be better to try to get this on once you get to this point, but we'll see how things go. But I also, like I said, see uh, another problem that I'll talk about in a minute uh, once I try to put this on. As I started to attempt installing the Outequip Glacier Pro on my mock-up roof, I was extremely happy that I was not installing this on my van or trailer project because I had made a major mistake. When I sat the template down and drilled the holes, I didn't pay close enough attention to the fact that the template was directional. At first glance, I thought all the bolts were square to the 14-inch hole opening, but that was not the case. When I go and install this permanently into my trailer project, I'll be sure to mark on the template which way goes towards the front. I would recommend to Outquip Pro that they would add arrows to the template to make it clear to the installer which way the template should face when marking the holes. But honestly, if I would have just been paying more attention, I should have noticed this. 
In the end, it didn't matter for the purpose of this mock-up demonstration, but it definitely will matter on your vehicle. All right, folks, so I went ahead and just got the brackets on so that I could hold the air conditioner in place and flip this board over so we can get a better look at how things are looking if you were inside your RV or van at this point. So like if you were looking up at it. Now, one thing that I feel like is really problematic if you're retrofitting an install like I'm showing here where you already have insulation and paneling up is that they are basically attaching the air conditioner by sandwiching the air conditioner and this bracket and tightening that together. If you have a thick insulation like what I'm using here, now granted this is just some styrofoam, I wouldn't use that as a real insulation, I just used it for demonstration purposes today, but if I was using something like pink foam or even spray on foam or something like that, something that could con continue to compress as you tighten these down or could compress over time as the trailer's moving and the air conditioner, the weight of the air conditioner is pulling on these brackets, it could compress that foam and, and then these could actually get loose over time. So I think that's a problem. Uh, I think if I was installing this or when I go to install it, I'm gonna put it in before I put my insulation and any type of paneling up. And then that way the bracket will only be against the ceiling material, which should be metal. So I think that would be the best option. So if I was retrofitting this into a, a unit, I would cut back all the way around this bracket so that that way you're not sandwiching between the paneling and the styrofoam. Hi right, buddy, did you get up? Did you wake it up out of the truck? You were in there having a good nap, weren't you? Yeah. All right, so let's talk about one more thing on this, something that I actually think I would love to see them change in future units, is the way the power cable is routed. As it is right now, it comes out the back of the unit and you've got two options. You can either drill a hole or they say you can cut a wedge into the uh, foam gasket and run it down through your, your normal 14 inch opening. I'm not for doing the cutting the hole in the gasket and running it through there because I just feel like that's just an opportunity for leaking. And I think it sucks that we have to put another hole and then event you want to put a gland uh, over that, but you'll have to drill a hole and then put a gland over it. I don't like that option either. I think that they should have some way that they could reroute this internally to make it to where it could actually just come through the 14 inch opening. But be aware, this is a good solid cable as well. If you are retrofitting another unit that most likely the wiring going to a, just a regular fan is not gonna be big enough gauge to be able to run this air conditioner. So you're gonna have to be able to run this all the way back to uh, your battery because it's six gauge cable and you know it needs quite a bit of power to run this. So kind of keep that in mind as well, that your current wiring that you have in there most likely is not gonna work. You're gonna have to run this back to the battery. All right, folks, so I hooked the air conditioner up to a battery so we could do some testing. Now, to give you guys an idea, the base of this board is running about 70 degrees, but when I actually checked the vents with the air conditioner on, which I've got the fan turned down to about medium, so it's very quiet. I'm getting, like right now, I'm getting like 23 degrees coming out of the vents. So that's pretty significant. Now, the other thing that I've done is I have connected up a amp meter so that I could get an idea how much amperage is coming out of this while I've got it on. Right now, it is at about 20 amps. So that's still pretty significant. I mean, that's gonna draw your battery down pretty quick if you have a small system. Still not horribly bad. Now I did kick this thing in the turbo mode and I saw it go as high as 50 amps at one point. So you're definitely not gonna be wanting to use that very often unless you're plugged in somewhere uh, with eight shore power. But 20 amps at running at you know its normal speed with the fan running about halfway that's not too bad, but like I said, you definitely are still going to want a pretty good battery system and charging system if you're going to think about putting an AC in your camper or van. But I tell you what, guys, it is not horribly hot today, but it is really comfortable 
sitting here underneath this air conditioning. The air coming out of here is so cool and crisp and it feels so good. I do wish I was putting this in Sasquatch. There's a part of me that would really love to have this convenience inside of Sasquatch right now. We'll wait, put this in a trailer, but man, I am really looking forward to this. This is gonna be very nice. All right, folks, so to finish up your install, you're gonna wanna put your decorative trim on the inside. Now, before you do that, you're gonna wanna trim your bolts back in order to get this to fit up against your, your ceiling. They make the bolts extra long, of course, to be able to accommodate different thicknesses of ceiling. So you'll wanna, like I said, you'll have to trim these based on your install. But once you do that, then this just basically slides on over like that. And then you just put your nuts on to tighten this down and then it'll be complete. I'm of course not gonna do that right now because I wanna make sure that I leave all this length so that I can accommodate however my ceiling turns out in the trailer build I wanna do. One other little maintenance item uh, to kind of wrap things up is you do on each side of the fan, you have a little filter here that can come out and be cleaned uh, every so often. So be aware of that. There is one here and there's one on the other side. They do seem to be a little bit difficult to get out. Like I can't just grab it with my fingernail and pull it. I have to use this little hook tool to kind of get in there and pull it. So I wish that was a little bit easier, but you will want to clean those every once in a while. Anyways, folks, I think that wraps everything up on this installation. Uh, I know this is a bit different, not actually putting this in a vehicle, but I'd be really interested to hear you guys' thoughts if you thought this was still useful to you and helping you decide whether or not this is something that you want to purchase or at least helped you, if you did purchase this, helped you figure out anything that you needed to know about installing it. Leave that information down below. If you are interested in purchasing one of these Outquip Pros uh, air conditioners, 12 volt air conditioners, definitely check out my description down below. I'll have all the information there that you need to purchase one of these units. Uh, I, am, <laughs> I am actually really excited about getting this put into a trailer and hoping to be able to have this set up in a office situation for me by next summer. Uh, going, the fact that we are now going into this summer, like I said, I already do wish I was putting this in my van. It'd be really nice, but I will definitely look forward to it in my office setup. It'll, it will definitely make editing videos much nicer during the summertime. Anyways, guys. I'm gonna pack this away in the shop and store it until I'm ready. And then I'm gonna pack up the van and we're gonna get back out. And so I'll see you guys again outside.